The Lost Weekend Movie Review. Come on, Jimmy, think! It was your idea to increase the amount of weekly reviews to three. Now you have to deliver. So stop procrastinating and write down something clever. Ah, forget it. Don't be ridic. What you need to find the right words is a drink. Just one drink. Be right back. Ah, at least this is much better. Servus Freunde, my name is Jimmy Cage and some of you might already know, but my favorite three directors of all time are Frank Capra, Billy Wilder and Alfred Hitchcock. A few weeks ago I reviewed Hitchcock's Dial M for Murder, then I talked about Capra's You Can't Take It With You. And today it's time to discuss Billy Wilder's 1945 psychological drama The Lost Weekend. This one is very often named as the very first film that deals with alcoholism in a serious manner, instead of using someone drunk for comedic purposes. So obviously I had to do something silly for the opening. But anyway, there were some other films even earlier that showed alcoholism as a serious matter. 1932's Merrily We Go To Hell or William A. Wellman's 1937 version of A Star Is Born. But The Lost Weekend is the most known and most acclaimed for sure, winning not only the grand prize of the Cannes Film Festival, but also four Academy Awards. Best Picture, Best Director, Best Screenplay and Best Actor. The screenplay was written by Billy Wilder and his longtime collaborator Charles Brackett, after Wilder has read the original novel by Charles R. Jackson over the course of a train ride from New York to Hollywood. He instantly knew that this would make a great story for his next picture. And it certainly did. The Lost Weekend is a fascinating and haunting depiction of a chronic alcoholic and Ray Milan gives a performance for the ages. He plays Don Burnham, a New York writer whose fear of failure causes him to drink. He hasn't written anything in years and lives by the charity of his brother Wick. The film sets in when he is just packing for a weekend vacation with said brother. The very first shot already tells us what's going on. It beautifully pans from the city landscape of New York to one open window, only that there is a bottle tied to a thread hanging out of there. Then we see a man in that window, our protagonist Don, who is just packing his bags and suddenly he pauses and looks over to that bottle. And there's this eerie music playing, as if the bottle is casting a strange spell over him. Of course that bottle is hanging from the window so that Don's brother Wick and his caring girlfriend Helen are noticing anything. Right now it seems as if Don has been sobering up and a little weekend vacation should solidify that. But of course, no one knows better about his addiction than Don, and so does the audience, just by these few seconds of marvelous filmmaking. That trip of sober tranquility won't happen. Instead, Don finds a way to trick his brother and girlfriend to let him be alone for a while and so another downward spiral begins. One that brings Don to the brink of madness and the temptation to end his life once and for all, so that everybody's better off. This forms the story of the film as well as the titular Lost Weekend. No other film before showed the means of an addict as meticulously as this one. In the vein of classical storytelling you need a protagonist for your movie with a clear cut goal. And typically that goal is determined by a certain lack. In that regard The Lost Weekend couldn't be more classic. Only that our protagonist is an alcoholic, the lack is the booze he can't afford or can't find and his goal is to do everything in his power to get drunk. It is his determination to stay addicted that drives the movie forward. His goal is to be alone with his bottle. In any other movie his brother and his girlfriend would be his accomplices on the journey. But because his goal isn't to get sober but to get drunk, these supporting people become the antagonists. And this perfectly portrays the real struggle of an addict and a highly difficult attempt of the people who care for them to help. 
Ray Milan is incredible as Don Burnham. I'm not sure where I've heard it, but the key to playing drunk is not to slur your words and waver, but to try to hide that you are drunk. Because that's what a real drunk would do. Act as normal as you can. But this part of playing a drunk only makes for a very small percentage of the film. It is much more about showing the dangerous, fatal drive behind the addiction and the torment. Don Burnham is a tormented soul. He describes himself as two persons. Don the writer, who becomes Don the drunk. Because of his low self-esteem and his fear of failure, he drowns himself in alcohol and everybody that's stopping him from doing so is in his way. Apart from the way he's delivering his lines and the way he uses his facial expressions and his body, a lot of the impact also comes simply through the way he looks. Milan apparently had a very strict diet for this and the way his face is constantly covered with sweat and how he slowly grows a beard over the course of the weekend, it really adds a lot. But even after I have seen the movie for three or four times, I'm still fascinated how you can tell this story, which is basically just about a man and his addiction, to fill 100 minutes. But Billy Wilder does it with ease. It is a dark movie, dark in terms of its subject matter and also dark in terms of the camera work. The director of cinematography was John F. Seitz, who also did Wilder's film noir masterpieces Double Indemnity and Sunset Boulevard. And The Lost Weekend is also very much a film noir, because of its psychological logical nature, because of the inner demons of a man, because of his downfall and the venture into the abyss, because he begins to steal to be able to satisfy his needs, because he hangs around in bars and with street workers, because he ends up in the drunk ward. There he meets the character of Bim, a male nurse and probably the most fascinating and ambivalent supporting character of the film. His motivation isn't easy to grasp. Does he really want to help his patients? Sometime in the past he probably wanted. Nowadays he seems almost to dwell in their hopelessness. They keep coming back to him because they can't overcome their addictions. So he might have given up hope to really help them. His devastating forecasts are all true because he knows all too well after all this time. And it can be a coincidence that his name Bim is also an abbreviation of Burnham. So in a way he might be a part of our protagonist. Maybe he's just in his imagination. It should also be mentioned that Bim is clearly coded as gay and that in Charles R. Jackson's original novel, Burnham is indeed a homosexual, which is also the reason why he drinks. With the heavy topic of alcoholism alone, it was hard enough to get this movie made. So Wilder knew that going with a gay protagonist was too much for 1945. But with the character of Bim, there's definitely room to read into and that only makes the film richer. But even with this nightmarish venture into the drunk ward, the horror elements of The Lost Weekend even increase when Don gets back to his apartment. The manic screams of Ray Milan would be comical in almost every other context, but here they work perfectly. But without a doubt one of the most important aspects of it all has to be the haunting score by Miklos Rosa. This one's for the ages. It is a very thick and prominent score, but it is so fascinating and peculiar that it doesn't matter. It's like the siren song of the bottle, like a haunting. It captures the power and the spell the bottle has over Don. The score features this strange wailing, the pathos of alcoholism, that was created by the use of a theremin. The Lost Weekend was one of the very first movies to feature this musical instrument. It was however also featured for the score of Alfred Hitchcock's Spellbound, which was released in the same year and whose score was also composed by Rosa. He was nominated for both scores and did take the Oscar for Spellbound. He did however say that he personally preferred his work on The Lost Weekend. And I agree. So in German I'd say Das verlorene Wochenende ist das faszinierend düstere Porträt eines Alkoholikers. Perfekt erzählt mit den Mitteln des Kinos, großartig gespielt und eine Musik, die ihresgleichen sucht. I give The Lost Weekend 9 out of 10. It's more like 8.8, .8, but I don't do that. Alright, that's it like always. Comment below and let me know what you think about The Lost Weekend. And also let me know what is your favorite film by Billy Wilder. You can hit me up on Twitter, Instagram and Letterboxd and now also on Patreon, simply at The Jimmy Cage. And if you enjoyed this episode, please give me a thumbs up, share, subscribe, whatever you like. And make sure you hit that bell for all I have to tell. Mm -hmm.